Oh, hey, everybody, and welcome back to another exciting edition of Convention Confessional. And by say another episode, I mean the whole second episode of this podcast adventure. <laughs> uh, I am your host, Katie Hunt, um, and I'm here to share the convention gem stories of the world with all of you, because I know right now we're all missing the convention scene and just wishing real hard that we could be out there and with each other. So what better way to fill the gap that is no convention time than to share stories uh, that will either make you laugh, cry, or literally scream in horror. I haven't got any horror stories yet. Um, I have a few that I can share on my own at some point, and I'm sure there will come a day. Uh, but right now, we have a very special guest with us, uh, my very good friend, Elizabeth. Good, good afternoon, dear. Hi, Katie. It's so Hi, good to how are you? I'm doing all right. How are you? Yeah, how's the lockdown? Um... It's boring. <laughs> right. It's all right. I mean, it is. All right. At this point, we're just kind of like, we've accepted it. Yep. <laughs> uh, well, you've come here today to share uh, a story or two, uh -huh. I, I imagine. That's the whole point of the podcast. And uh, I'm very excited because I want to know, one, if I know any of these stories, because a lot of people that have contacted me are like, oh, I have stories you don't even know about yet. So this will be interesting to hear i'm sure i think you know one of them i'm not sure if you if you if i've told you the the first one i'm going to do because it's shorter but i'm pretty sure i've told the second one a bunch of times because it's pretty funny okay all right cool well the floor is yours dear feel free all right so the first one um uh, just and just to kind of put this out there I tell I'm all over the place when I tell stories so I like to apologize in advance for that and for the listeners so I might bounce around <laughs> a little bit uh so I'm hoping you actually get a lot of stories like this where it's like the normal people interacting with the convention goers because those are some of my favorites those are the best uh, stories uh so what what year was this it was like 2016 maybe 2017 it was the last so around the time year you were like the time we were like 21, right? Yeah, I wish. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, but it was the last year that Boston Comic Con was at the seaport before uh, it became Fan Expo Boston and moved over to the convention center. Mm -hmm. uh, because I was staying with, um, a with a couple of friends at the seaport hotel, which is right across from the event venue. So this was Saturday. Uh, it was mid-afternoon, like 3 o'clock-ish. Uh, we just changed our costume into normal geeky clothes and we're heading back over somewhere so we're waiting for the elevator uh meanwhile these four or five bridesmaids come by and someone which uh was either the mother or the bride or the groom based on what they were wearing uh and they come over now this is at the seaport hotel and the seaport district box at boston it's a pretty fancy hotel like not yeah, it's looking nice it's, down it's there. up there. Yeah, so um, there were no actual convention events at the hotel, but it was one right next to the venue, so uh, it pretty much was. <laughs> so um, one of the bridesmaids was complaining that the top of her dress wasn't fitting correctly, so they all had strapless dresses, and um, she's like, "Oh no, it, well it fit fine before," and then she's like, "I'm gonna have to be hiking this up the whole time," and like she turns her back to one of them, and they're looking. She's like, "I think something's wrong with the." The hook i'm like and um i'm normally like kind of a quiet quiet and shy person i don't talk to people i don't know and i don't know i'm just and but i'm also like very helpful person so i'm like i can fix that and they like turn and look at us i'm like yeah i like we're here for the convention so we have sewing supplies in our room it's right over there she's like really i'm like yeah yeah it'll just take a minute so we bring over to the room the rest of the group goes down because they have to be down there for you know the wedding <laughs> and Luckily, uh -huh. the hotel put, um, if you booked um, a room for the convention through the hotel, they put a little mini sewing kit in there, like th with the pre-threaded, oh. with the pre-threaded needles. And one of the, mm -hmm. one of the thread colors, I mean, it probably wouldn't matter what color you put in there at that point, but one of the colors matched the dress perfectly. So I didn't even have the thread needle, which is good because I was a little nervous sewing this thing on this dress of this person I don't know. <laughs> um, but we had <laughs> an extra hook and eye because you know, I had my sewing repair kit and I put, um, right. whatever side was missing on took like a minute, uh, hooked it together and it just fit her 
beautifully and like if you've ever <laughs> worn a strapless dress that does not fit right and you have to hike the thing up oh, oh god it's the worst so she's like really? oh my god thank you so much and she gave me a hug and she's like okay i gotta go but thank you thank you thank you and she ran out and we stayed in the room and i was like that just happened <laughs> So I fixed a bridesmaid dress <laughs> <laughs> at a convention, <laughs> which was Yay, so random. Heroes. I know. <laughs> I I could not imagine pulling that dress up the whole time. Oh uh, so that's yeah, my no. short. That's Smoking my shorter story. That um that that's the one I don't think I'd mentioned to you before because that one's relatively newer. Uh, but that's awesome. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure this next one is my favorite story. Of all time. It's another funny one. So I'm going to have to think of some horror stories for next time. But this was at... Am I right in the name of the convention? Yeah. I don't care. It's not about the conventions. Oh, God, please. Uh, So it's at Kineticon. And I want to say it's like 2009 or 10. I think it's before like you and I became like really good friends when we just kind of knew each other. So like 2009, 2010. And uh, I was staying at the Connecting Hotel with... My brothers, at least one of my brothers, I'm not sure if it was both, and one of uh, my brother's friends. And uh, after we got in the masquerade, couldn't tell you what masquerade it was, <laughs> uh, we were hungry. And so if anyone's ever been to downtown Hartford, Connecticut, and it was even worse 10 years ago, downtown is not oh, great. God. And there's like no food options nearby. No. Like this was always such a negative of this. It, it was, I remember, I don't even remember the last year I went, but I remember it was a little better. So we just ordered Domino's, whatever. Um, but we also wanted something to drink and we didn't think of bringing anything with us. I don't know why. But um, we looked at the room service menu and actually getting bottled beer from room service wasn't horrible. So we ordered like a variety. They had like a variety of bottled beer things and like fine um so we're waiting for the beer waiting for the pizza and the pizza comes from brother and his friend go down there and we're waiting and it's like taking a while like like, why does this seem like it's taking them forever and uh they go they come back with the pizza and a six pack of beer and i'm like where'd you get the beer and they're like let me tell you. Um, so what happened was they go to get the pizza and the guy had a you know whole bunch of pizzas because everyone at the hotel's ordering pizza. And ours sure. was at the bottom. And I guess it didn't have that like little plastic table thing that they put to protect the pizza because the top of the box had gotten to the cheese. So when you open it up, the cheese was all stuck to the top. And the driver's like, oh man, I'm so sorry. Look, I'm like going back there and... They're going to send me right back with the next order. I'll phone ahead, tell them to make another one. It was a pretty basic cheese or something. Right. And, you know, it will, we'll bring it back. No cost. We're like, okay, whatever. No big deal. So they're, he, and they're like, well, we do this one. They're like, you can eat it or throw it away. I don't care. We'll, we'll, we'll bring you a new one. We'll make it right. So my brother and his friend start heading back to the room. They get off at our, our floor in the hotel and they run into this guy, uh, who they said was either drunk or high or possibly both. Hmm. And the guy's like, oh, my God, you guys have pizza? I am so hungry right now. I could really go for some pizza. Can I trade you, like, two or three slices of that pizza for this six-pack of beer? And my brother and his friend are like, yeah, sure. (laughs) Take whatever you want. (laughs) So the guy took, like, half the pizza that was destroyed by the box and didn't even seem to notice that it was, you know, completely destroyed i mean yeah it's still (laughs) edible but it's like all right you can take okay bye and the guy i think went down the elevator down his room or something and then they came back over they came back over to our room and were like and then told us what happened (laughs) i'm like oh i guess we didn't have to order beer from room service uh (laughs) so that's how we got a free six pack of beer and that's also just going to show you that like convention people will literally trade like an arm for like food after a long day at a convention it's like, like regardless of the state they're in yeah like oh, man like that area was just not great oh, and you don't want to walk around and i went to hartford um well two summers ago because no one went anywhere last summer uh, cause I went to a hartford yard goats game and 
I actually went around downtown after the game a little bit. Uh, and it's a lot better. Is it? Yeah, it's it's better. Like, I felt okay walking around. I mean, there are three of us. Yeah, so. the last time I was down there was 2014. So that was seven years ago now. Mm-hmm. Jesus, seven years wow. ago. Um, and it was starting to improve because they'd put that science center in. So it was, like, yeah. nice around the convention center on that side. And I remember at the convention, they were having some, like, summer festival at the same time. Yeah, they had, like, a... Yeah, so, like, we looked out because there was, like, thing. a huge- yeah, like food trucks and everything else mm-hmm. that weekend. I was like, oh my gosh, this is the first time there's been food close by that wasn't at a kiosk at the top of those stairs you can never get up because everyone's sitting on them. Yep. <laughs> yeah, no, that there's nothing always, around there. That was always such an issue. Well, no, that's not true because then they put the movie theater in, so there was movie theater food across the street. <laughs> yeah, and there was a, a restaurant at one point right across the street. And oh then my there God, was a. Want- Oh, there was a subway that opened up nearby too. Ooh! At you one hear point. my uh, I have a story about that restaurant across the street, the Capitol. Oh my god! Yes. Oh god! Yeah. So, Connecticut. I think it was probably 2013. I think it was the year before my last year, and we had all gotten together uh, for main events to get together to figure out stuff. And you know, it was like we had a break in between. We're like, okay, well, let's go find uh, food in between. And of course, we're all thinking to ourselves, we're gonna have to walk across town to go to City Steam, which was the only decent restaurant that I remember being in downtown Hartford. That mac and cheese is oh, that mac the and bomb. cheese. Oh, like if I'm ever going to New York, like we're driving to New York, we stop in Hartford on the way there and the way back just to get that mac and cheese. Well, you should come to a yard goats game with me. That's actually really fun. Sure. Yeah, when we can- when we can do stuff again. Yeah, we can do things again. <laughs> um, but anyway, so we're like, okay, well, we need to go someplace close by and quick to get something to eat so that we can get back to main events. Na, na, na. And we're like, well, let's go to this place, the Capitol, because, you know, it looks just like a restaurant on the outside. But you go in and like the second we walked in there, it felt like we shouldn't be in there. We were just like, it was like black curtains and like the hostess was in all black, like fancy black dress. Everyone's wearing heels. You kind of look around and everyone's in like shirt and ties. It's the middle of the afternoon. So it's definitely like a happy hour set up. And we're walking in and like, you know, your anime shirts or shorts or (laughs) very out of place. And you would think at that point, perhaps the hostess would say something to the effect of like, oh, um, you know, this is kind of like a black tie kind of place. Like, we'd be like, oh, no worries and leave. No, no, they sit us in the middle of all these people <sighs> with, like, those menus that barely have a second side to them so you know it's fancy because, it's like, if you can't afford what's on this side, you can't afford what's on the other side. And <laughs> we're looking at it and we're just looking to see like, what to have to drink. We haven't even touched the food items yet. And there was the cheapest drink on there at the beginning of, like, their drink list was something like $35. Ooh. <laughs> and we're just sitting there like, $35 for like some kind of mocktail something. I don't even, I can't even remember what was in it. And our all friends were just like, well, what do we do? We're sitting here. Like, do we have to stay in order? And I'm like, I'm not paying like $600 to have a quick lunch so we could go back across the street. So all my friends were looking at me like I'm the leader of the pack. Like, well, what do we do? And I'm like, we leave <laughs> like this. And I stood up and I walked out. <laughs> That seems like a poor location because oh, it's like a, a lot of there's like a lot of events at the convention center and like people don't know the area and they just want to find the quickest place to get something to eat and right so it, I mean maybe it makes sense if they do a lot of business business uh, right and like I said I don't really expense know this meetings but like that convention center I don't really know like what else it kind of purposes for, as far as conventions go I remember going there one time to go film something for a Kineticon commercial and they were having like a tattoo convention. Cool. I know. I really you know, wish they have, one. <laughs> they have that at the Heinz sometimes. Mm-hmm. And, and in the past, they've had tattoo conventions. I'm like, those must mm. be wild. Oh my God. It must be so much fun. I want to go to one now. All right. Well, now we got to find one of those eventually. <laughs> I just need to get yeah. another tattoo. That sounds like another convention confessional. <laughs> <Honestly>. <laughs> Bad tattoo choices made at midnight. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, so it's just like there was absolutely nothing around that convention center. It's sad. Like, I mean, there was definitely like highway get on, get off. That science center went in, and then after that, it was kind of like you had to roam around Hartford to find anything mm-hmm. else to do if you needed to. I feel like that's such a make or break thing about conventions sometimes is mm-hmm. like how easily accessible is the food? Right, right. I mean, like, or- Anime Boston has just, I think, we're spoiled by that. True. Uh, 
because they had the food court. Well, then they had cha- put Italy in, and but then they have another mini food court nearby, and there's so many options. Mm-hmm. Um, but Grubhub and those things probably will. Um, I mean, I only started using Grubhub like a couple of years ago, so I didn't get a chance to really use it last year during a convention, but I've been using it so much during the lockdown that oh yeah, <laughs> it's probably like, oh, we'll just order everything through Grubhub now. <laughs> yeah, We have so many coupons by the time we go back to conventions that we can use to get like free food. Like, all right, who's signing up for the free thing now to get no delivery costs? Yeah, right. Well, I've got the group of gold. <laughs> like, who can who hasn't used it yet so we can refer you? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> exactly. 14 free deliveries. We're going to make it through the weekend, guys. Like, we don't need to go to Cheesecake Factory anymore. We'll just have it delivered. <laughs> Even though it's literally across the street from the hotel. <laughs> yeah, but the wait is like two hours. <laughs> it always is. Oh. The Cheesecake Factory is so good, but it's so evil, especially like when you get out of main events and you just want to go have cheesecake and you have to wait like two hours to get a table. Nope. Like this time we can just order on DoorDash. Maybe even go pick it up so we don't have to pay a delivery fee. Mm-hmm. It's and true. And just chill in the hotel room. I can't Wait, even sorry. imagine, like I said, going back to conventions now, like Starbucks, they have that whole thing where you order online and it's just sitting there for you. Like, I can't even imagine what Starbucks will look like in any venue ever when that happens oh they turn it off oh, sometimes no. <laughs> so like Howard? i don't i don't know if they always have if maybe they just don't have it but so at the west end next to the boston Convent to bcc they have um there's a starbucks and um they don't have the pickup on when there's conventions there <laughs> um but the the dung and donuts that's right next to the heinz entrance inside the prudential center they do and there's been and because i've been using the dung and donuts one forever and there's so many times where like i'll leave my hotel room i'll put the i'll order it from my phone while i'm waiting for the elevator i'll go down and then just like walk by a line of like 30 people go grab my iced coffee it's usually my iced coffee and then one for our friend Doug and then be like okay bye everyone there's an app you know that you can do this and not wait in line that's what I was saying it's just like it would be so it's so much smarter because it's literally just like okay here you go there's a table outside has everybody's drinks on it bye yep yeah that's oh my God. that actually probably would be easier that than line moment. for that Dunkin Donuts is ridiculous that's why you gotta order on the app. But it's so funny too, because then you like you find that line, and you're like, "Shit, is this the line to get into the convention center? Or are you guys just waiting for donkeys? Oh, you're just waiting for donkeys. I'm good. Thanks. Oh, okay. Oh, the other line is that way. Yeah. Oh, right. Gotcha. right. <laughs> oh man, maybe my brother was in, when it, from the notorious Lion Con, which was oh my god, that was a long time ago. That was two thousand eight. My brother was in that line on Friday all day. Ooh. We should get him on. I mean, it's. I imagine it's kind of boring, but a line con. We could. I mean, we could sum up line con right now. But I'll take people's horror stories of line con because I remember. So two thousand eight, I went and I got in a day early, so I went to the pre registration line, and mm-hmm. that was the last night the computers worked the entire weekend. Oh, I was. I staff lucked that out year. so hard getting my badge. I was staff that year, so mm-hmm. that was fun. But my brother was stuck in line, I think, for like at least ten hours. Yeah, oh my god. I remember Brie was stuck in that line. We should just do an episode of that. Line con? Ooh. I'm just be like, oh, did you experience line con back in 2008? <laughs> right. We're, I'm sorry. It's like, you do one of those PSA commercials that looks like one of those, like, you know, commercials about people getting, like, hurt by drugs and stuff. Were you a victim of line con? <laughs> I mean, at <laughs> least, like... Trauma related to standing in a line at Anime Boston for 17 hours. I mean, at least at Dra- like, Dragon Con, there were some years where we waited, like, a few hours, but... They used to sell beer and went like, like the hotel had those little like mini carts set up where you could buy like, you could get a beer while you were waiting. So it wasn't oh, that Georgia. bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, oh my god! Yeah, nope. I do have a horror story for next time. Remind me. Oh wait, why next time? Let's just do it now. We got some now? time. Yeah, All right, cool. yeah, let's do it. All right. So I can't believe I didn't think of this one because this I'm one. So was excited. Nuts. Okay, so this is Dragon Con and yes, I'm. Uh, those elevators in the Marriott, man, like, I held on as long as possible to not stay in the Marriott, but then, like, once our group kind of dwindled down, I was like, okay, fine, no one wants to share, stay in the Sheridan, and they all go stay in the Marriott. I'll <laughs> cry about it the whole time. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just hate those elevators. Oh, my God. Give me but they look point. so pretty in a Marvel movie. I know, right? Or a Hunger Games movie. <laughs> or Hunger Games. Um. All right, so we were... 
we were all trying to get downstairs and um I managed to like squeeze into this this one elevator and uh and it was full like I was the last person to get in and of course like they don't have the weight sensors so they'll still stop most of the time so anyway it it stops at this floor and then this drunk guy is trying to get on and there's nowhere for him to go but he's standing in the door and he keeps like pushing the doors open so they can't close meanwhile the elevator is like i want to close like why can't i close and there's this like this guy in the front who's like uh he had to be like six two six three and pretty like broad shouldered like he looked like he could yeah he's like massive dude yeah and he's like i thought him and the guy were like going to get in it like into it like actual fisticuff fighting and this drunk guy is just yelling and like the elevator is like shaking and like it's packed and um like i'm usually not a person that's problem with elevators i just have a problem with waiting for elevators that's my problem right (laughs) it's the wait. i don't do waiting um (laughs) but it's like like it, it was like pretty like and I know like what how elevators work, so I'm not like, oh my god, this is gonna plummet and we're gonna die. Right. Because like I I know how they all work, but it's like this is kind of scary with this guy here and like the and so finally the doors close and then they immediately open again. <laughs> uh. Like we we he finally like the big guy finally pushed the drunk guy away long enough that the doors could close, but Mm -hmm. he must have pushed the button or something and they immediately open and then it just all starts over again. And everyone's like screaming at the guy, like me and these other people who are all in the middle are kind of like, kind of freaking out. Um, And then finally the doors close (laughs) and it starts moving down and I'm like, oh my God. Where the hell was security on that one? Well, we were on like one of the, the room floors so like oh okay so you weren't like near yeah. like the room. okay no again. this was like on one of the room floors so like unless like a security person for the hotel happened to be walking by which i never see that yeah. then there wasn't anyone i mean we probably could have pushed the help button but no i probably wouldn't have done anything i think those are all fake uh but we get so it stops at like the first of the main floors i think there's three four you think i'd remember i think there's three yeah. and everyone piles out and everyone's like oh my god oh my god and like i was by myself like i wasn't with any of our other friends Mm -hmm. and i was like oh my god and then i see i go over and i see like four of the people who are in the elevator kind of just like standing there chatting they must be friends and like again this is me talking to strangers why i i don't do this usually i go over to them like i'm like hey can i just like decompress with you guys because that was really freaking scary and they're like yes yes yeah, we're all doing that right now. You may you may join us. Hi, I'm so and so and so and so. I don't remember any of their names. And I feel like <laughs> But they're listening like, right now and they're like, How could you not remember us? <laughs> and like it just what made it just so scary is just the the elevator was like trying to go close and move down, so it was like shaking. And I've seen those those elevators do other stuff over the years. Like one year there was an elevator stuck because you can see them like right in the middle of the atrium and there was an elevator stuck way at the top like not way at the top probably in like the 30s or something and it was there for like an an hour maybe i don't know and then there was another year (laughs) where it's was i in this one or my friends in it it stopped and then it like went down another foot or went up a foot so the door wasn't lined up with the thing and everyone's like do we get out or do we not get out? I mean, we've all seen that Final Destination. When yeah, no, you get out. <laughs> no, but, get out finally, like people were like, nope. And then nope. Finally, there was someone like, nope, I'm out. And then everyone piled out, and then it didn't move since then. But like those elevators are kind of, um, terror. Like They're not scary. great. And I'm like, I yeah. It's no so good. that was my. But you know what? If I do end up going to Dragon Con this year. Who who knows right now? I do have room at the Sheridan, so I'm not staying at the Marriott again. Yeah, no, like no, I wonder if are terrible at conventions, like n- <sighs> like notoriously bad, no matter where you go. Because like, oh my god, the ones at Kineticon were atrocious. 
Mm-hmm. And the thing about those ones is they were kind of the first ones to have where you had to put your card in to oh go my God, yeah. Yeah. which I understand for a security purpose, yes. But like at a convention, they needed to turn that shit off. Mm-hmm. Like just have somebody there to watch the elevators to make sure people got on and off of them. Nobody was ever watching those elevators. So you would get into them and or like when you finally got into them and then someone's like, oh, I'm going to hit every single floor. I'm like you fucking tool bag. <laughs> I remember seeing that. I remember that used to be a thing. Oh, I remember time. Melissa. We were at Kineticon. I believe it was the last year of Kineticon for me, and something got left up in the hotel room, and we needed it for the event. And I remember Melissa like was gone, and I'm like, "Well, good luck. I'll see you in two hours when you get upstairs." You know, and she was back in like 25 minutes, which is unheard of. <laughs> I was like, how did you get up and down so quickly? Like, especially at this the time of day that it was. I was like, there's no way. And she goes, oh, you know what I did? I flashed my staff badge in someone's face that was dicking around with the controls. And I said, don't touch it. Don't look at it. Nobody else get on this elevator. And she went up, went to the room, and just happened to catch one on the way down that only had, like, 17 people in it. So she was able to get on it to come down the rest of the way. Nice. I was like, wow, you're magic. No, the key is to, like, ask for a low floor room. Yep. Like, that's the key. And luckily, it's, like, a place where you actually can use the stairs. There have been some times at conventions where you've used the stairs. I'm like, I am lost. Oh, my God. There's been many of a convention where I just, I've given up. And I'm, I'm like, 17th floor, and I just don't care anymore. I've done the stairs. It's not yeah. pretty. Oh, Especially no. We've depending on the costume that. you're wearing. We've definitely done that. But, oh, yeah. Bring yeah. snacks. You bring snacks like, on those trips. <laughs> especially Sunday, if you're leaving on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. So, okay, another elevator story. This is a good, uh, happy story. Um, <laughs> this was Otakon 2011 or 12. So, I was staying with friends at, um, it's like the Marriott something something. It was across from the, the venue where they had the masquerade, and I can't remember the name of it. Okay. Um, so it was like a block or two away from the convention center. So it wasn't like in that immediate area, mm-hmm. but it was a taller building and the floors were all kind of small. Um, and I want to say it only had one elevator, maybe two. Stop it. And I, we were on the seventh floor and this was like, you know, 10 years ago. This was before I learned all my like tricks and stuff. Right. Uh, so <laughs> I'm an idiot who didn't leave till like like 11 and I can't get an elevator like my other friends had left like I can't get an elevator everyone is full if I am like hmm so I'm back to the room and I call the front desk and I'm like can I get a cart and they're like oh yeah we'll be up in a little bit with one and actually they did come pretty quickly I think it's because everyone else had, was leaving right and the guy comes up and I put my luggage on and he, I'm like you know, I'm having trouble getting an elevator. Just so you know, he's like, he's like, oh, that won't be a problem for us. So he took me down the service elevator. <laughs> Hell yes! <laughs> uh, and I gave him a very nice tip. And mm-hmm. yeah, that was, um, yeah. So, I mean, sometimes it's different with different hotels, but you can always try that. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes they have hotels, have, some hotels have weird room rules with the carts. The key is, though, to get, like, a gold membership with a hotel, and then you can get late checkout. Right. That's and, like, a butler and everything else, too. Well, not that, but... <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> late checkout, though, though, it's like, yes, please. Yes. Yes, late checkout is clutch. I'm just... Now, because I only work at the one convention, um, and we have the party right after the convention's over on the Sunday, I leave on a Monday, there's nobody on the elevators, there's nobody oh, yeah. there. It's so weird, but it's so nice. Mm-hmm. to roll out of bed and you're like I'm going home and I'm getting on the elevator and then I'm leaving <laughs> oh man yeah all right well thanks Elizabeth no problem I'm this sure was fun. I miss you I miss you too I'm sure I have I plenty of other stories <laughs> oh god yeah no I'm sure like a thousand stories to come I mean I've got a few that I've still got written out I've got like a list to share <laughs> At some point, it's like, oof. And it's like, I was thinking to myself when I was making this podcast, I'm like, are these going to be appropriate? Better put that E rating on there just in case. No, just, yeah, just get the E rating on yeah, just there. Do it. So people can just tell the worst stories. Right. It's like, and, and they will. They will. I'm, I'm sure of it. 
Uh, hey, is there anything you'd like to uh, promote while you're on here? Anything happening in your life that you'd like to shout out? Um, I mean, I still do the animecons.com thing, but we don't really do the podcast anymore. I mean, we did for like 10 years, so right. Right. Um, our whole backlog's up there. But if you need to know where to go to a convention, that's fa- animecons.com and fancons.com. That's where you'll want to go once they come Absolutely. back, and then you yeah. can see where you want to go. I'm going to, maybe next year I'll travel somewhere to a new one I haven't been to before. Yeah. Maybe a different country. I'll pass on that. Okay, cool. So thanks again. <laughs> <laughs> I will link uh, fancons.com and animecons.com in uh, all the information when we put this podcast up. Thank you so much for coming on, my dear. Thank you for having me, Katie. No Hopefully problem. Next time we can do this in person. No, right, seriously. Tell your friends. Have them come on. Oh, wait. Your friends are my friends. LOL. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, I'll talk about this later, but I, 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 I do have some people who I want to connect you with. Oh, that excellent. Could be interesting. So. Yeah. All right. Faithful listener, you heard it here. More people to come. Um, also, next week, since I'm on here, I'd like to uh, point out that we're going to have a very special guest next week on the podcast. I'm very excited about it. Um, uh, legendary voice actor Greg Finley is going to be joining me. Oh, he's so I'm, nice. I know. I know. He's very excited. I'm very excited. I haven't talked to him in a little while, but he will be on here next week talking about his convention experiences. So we look forward to that. And uh, like I said, make sure you like and uh, share. And Elizabeth, thank you again. Anytime, Katie. Lovely. Anytime. And you viewers, listeners, whatever you are, we will see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye.